Canada's top 10 program, done by TIFF annually, has become hugely popular and helps raise public awareness of Canadian achievement in film. We sat down with Steve Gravestock to talk about the Canada's top 10 program and the many ways TIFF has helped bring the spotlight to Canadian films year round. You know, when you pick a top 10 list, what do you do with it? Well, I'm excited about it too, but we actually don't, I'm, one of the reasons I'm excited is because we don't actually pick the list. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, two panels, uh, one focusing on shorts and one focusing on features. Uh, they're uh, across the country. Um, they're national panels, uh, not someone from every province or every region, but, uh, you know, as, as national as we can make it. The available eligibility is based on release, uh, commercial release, and festival play. Mm -hmm. um, it would be uh, commercial release in, in some of the major markets. Uh, the, the list is, the great thing about the top 10 list is that, uh, I mean, audiences really do respond to the films, and it get, I mean, it gets progressively, uh, they're progressively more excited in, uh, about the films, and uh, that the list does get a lot of attention, not just... Uh, local but nationally and in fact internationally it's uh, it's commented on uh, makes usually makes the uh, the international trade so it's 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 kind of an important thing and it's a uh, I mean it's cool to showcase uh, Canadian cinema at any time and what is uh, what, what is the audience response to it when they go and see these films do they are they informed about them are they discovering them for the first time um, some know about them. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, th there is some crossover with some of the festival audience. So, uh, uh, but there's also some people who go to this uh, series regularly, who go to the the, the top ten festival regularly. Um, they they uh, and some some have been coming since its inception, which is pretty cool actually to have that loyal a fan base or an audience base. Uh, yeah, we we uh, usually have guests for. Uh, uh, usually 80, 100 percent of the films. Uh, it, um, they vary. Uh, usually, there's a re representative from every film. Uh, sometimes it depends. Uh, um, not always the director. Uh, sometimes actors. Sometimes writers. Sometimes producers. All of whom have their own unique perspective on the film. So mm -hmm. there's obviously some films that make uh, a, n a large number of lists and. You know, some films, uh, usually the way it works is that uh, inclusion on the list requires uh, that several of the panelists vote for it. Uh, like uh, one or two panelists, uh, unless they put the film first, will not be enough to make put the film on the list. Mm -hmm. uh, that's usually the way the voting works out. Um, but we don't actually rank them. We just list them alphabetically, which I think is a... You know, it's less. Uh, um, it's nicer. So stratified. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of a Canadian way, I guess. <laughs> How can audiences connect with the top ten list? Is it does it go on online? Um, and how can they find out where these screenings are shown? The information should be online at tiff.net, uh, um, uh, or I think Canada's top ten as well. dot ca. Uh, but I'd start with tiff.net. But th there'll be. Uh, uh, there's usually quite substantial press coverage the day the list is and the, the two lists are announced. Um, uh, so and and I believe the tickets go on sale that day as well. Um, so that's how you check it out. And in Vancouver, I would just uh, keep an eye out for uh, uh, the schedule for the Pacific Cinema Tech and in Edmonton the the schedule for the Metro.